Officer, what's going on? Yeah, we need clearance to take this man to the station. Get out of here! Leave me alone! A couple of businesses called to complain about a homeless drunk wandering around the area the last few days. He was disturbing people, he was agitated, oh. breath reeks the whiskey. I gotta get out of here. Where am I? You're in a hospital, Mr. He doesn't know his name. He doesn't have ID, he was sweating a lot, face was red, and uh, we decided just to bring him in and get him checked out first. You do a breathalyzer on him? Didn't have to, he smelled his breath. Blood alcohol is zero. Seriously? Blood sugar level is high. 570. The fruity smell on his breath. It's not alcohol, it's ketones. They're produced when there's not enough insulin in your blood. Typical. There's a Thomas the Tank Engine tattoo. I used to read those books to Luke. I, I think this guy's got kids. Officer, you need to uncuff him. He's not drunk, and I doubt he's homeless. He's sick. He needs to be admitted. We're gonna take care of him, okay? If there's anyone in the area looking for a missing person matching his description, send them to Bunker Hill. Sir? Hey. Tell me your name, sir. Hey. What are you doing? Try to calm down, sir. We're just giving you some more saline. Get me out of here. I'm sorry I had to restrain you, but you kept pulling out your IV. You'll feel better soon. Something's not right. His blood sugar levels are coming down. His heart rate and blood pressure are normalizing. His confusion should have cleared up by now. Yeah. Dr. Wallace, the police directed his family here. Nathan. Oh, my God. Daddy? You know this man? Yeah, he's my husband. Hey, Nathan. We're here. Who are you? Earlier this week, he was totally normal. Then two days ago, Bobby's preschool called me. Nathan never showed to pick him up, and he wasn't answering his phone. I was on a business trip in Arizona, and I flew back right away. What's happening to him? We believe his diabetes got out of control, and he couldn't adjust his blood sugar, which made him confused and combative. I don't understand. What do you mean? Diabetes. Nathan's not diabetic. Are you sure? Yes. Is he taking any new medications? No, nothing. He's been healthy. How could this happen? Just out of nowhere. It... What's wrong with Daddy's eye? Dr. Wallace. Nathan? Nathan, can you look straight ahead of me, please? Get me out of here! What's going on? The muscle responsible for his eye movement is paralyzed. His oxygen saturation level is dropping. His diaphragm's weakening. Paralysis is spreading. Daddy? I need a BiPAP machine here right now. Okay, that's You're gonna have to ask him to leave, please. He's okay. okay, he's in good hands. Trust me. This is the sequence of nucleotide base pairs from Nathan's DNA sample. I compared his full genome sequence to a database of all the known genes and DNA base pair sequences. There's one sequence that remains unidentified. An anomalous strand of DNA. That's our virus? Most likely. What kind of variant is it? That's the problem. It doesn't exist in any of our databases. Are you saying it's never been seen before? It may be the DNA of a virus we've never seen. But whatever it is, it's not human. You're saying some kind of animal did this to him? Many viral infections originate in an animal before crossing over into humans. It's important that we know exactly what the animal was in order to know how to treat Nathan. The BiPAP machine is helping Nathan breathe, but his diaphragm is steadily weakening. We're going to need to intubate. You may put him on life support. We're just stabilizing him while we look for a cure. Now what if you can't find one? Does that mean he may never wake up? It's possible. Nathan. Nathan, my name is Dr. Wallace. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm in the hospital. I'm sorry to say you've contracted a virus. We're having trouble identifying what it is. So you don't know what's making me sick? Not yet. While we search for a cure, I'm going to need to intubate you to keep you breathing. I know you're scared, Nathan. This is the hardest thing in the world. The best thing for you to do right now is to be strong for your son. You ready? Hey, Bobby. All right, Bobby. Be gentle on your dad. I'm sorry, Daddy. Are you okay? I'm so okay. Hey, kiddo. This must be pretty scary, huh? A little. Listen to me, okay? This is all gonna be okay, and the three of us, this will 
all go back to normal, okay? You promise? I promise. Now come here, give daddy a hug. A gentle hug. I love you so much. I love you too. I'll let your dads talk for a minute, okay? Okay. Listen to me, Seth. Yeah. I know I'm gonna pull through this, but just in case, you gotta promise me some thanks, okay? Okay, anything. Read to Bobby every night and do the voices. I know you feel <laughs> silly, but he loves it. I want him to grow up in a home where it's okay to be silly. Okay, I can do that. And you need to be the dad I know you can be. And finish the swing set I was working on in the shed. I cut all that wood myself. Don't you dare go to Walmart and buy one of those plastic monstrosities. <laughs> Malik, I think I might know what happened to Nathan. What is it? It's a long shot, but it's a chance. Let's go find Scott. Yeah. We need a search party. We're up against the clock here. Nathan's been working in his shed on a swing set the past few weeks. Could have come in contact with a bug that may have infected him. Maybe a beetle, a carpenter ant. Sheds are dark and damp. It's a perfect breeding ground. OK. Let's turn this place upside down. Gentlemen, found something. What is it? A tick. Looks like there might be a small colony of them living in this pile. But we already checked Nathan for Lyme disease. Well, the tick may be carrying another disease. One we haven't seen before in humans. It's just like swine flu. It's carried by pigs and then jumps species. Uh, we need to take it back to the lab to see if it carries the same disease Nathan has. If it does, it could be the answer to our cure. How is Nathan doing? He's been intubated, and we confirmed the tick's carrying the same virus that infected him. It's a brand new neurosclerotic disease. I alerted the CDC. They're issuing a warning. How long did it take the disease to kill the tick? No, the tick is still alive. Which means it's developed antibodies to keep the virus at bay. So we can harvest the tick's plasma, which contains its natural immunities to the virus, and inject it into Nathan. That's great news. It's never been tried in humans before. And it is a foreign substance. Nathan's body could reject it completely, or even worse, it could cause his system to go into a state of shock. What does the FDA say? Well, under their own guidelines, we don't need to seek approval in an emergency situation. We have hours here, not days. Good. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than seek permission. Treatment is a risky move. Not entirely comfortable with it. Do you regret the decision you made back in Ohio? Giving the boy with leukemia the unapproved drug. My gut told me I had to do anything I could to keep that boy alive. No matter what. What is your gut telling me now? That I need a sandwich before I go injecting tick plasma into a human being for the first time ever. At the foot of the mountain, Henry slowed to a crawl. These mountains are much too high, he moaned. I can't go. I'm afraid of heights. Don't be silly, said Thomas bravely. Hey. Follow my finger with your eyes, please. Yeah, looking good. Your oxygen level's back to normal and your fever's coming down. I'm gonna be okay. You'll need periodic antibody infusions for a few weeks and physical therapy. But you're breathing on your own and your cognitive function is normal, so yeah, you're gonna be okay. I don't know how to thank you. You saved my life. You saved my family. Well, let's get him in here so we can celebrate. Daddy! Hey, kiddo. Get in there. Are you? You scared the hell out of me, Nathan. 